Hello, I'm Helen Fu. Welcome to Health Factor. Have you ever heard of the saying, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food? Una Williams, who has appeared regularly for many years as the featured chef on New Hampshire's ABC Cook's Corner, presents the power of food. You are what you eat. Chef Una has a culinary arts degree. She has a deep knowledge of food and presents in a lively, entertaining, and informative manner, all with a very British accent. Welcome to the show, Una. Thank you for having me, Helen. So excited. So tell me about your background. What made you choose this path? Well, growing up in England, we all grew up on real food at that time. I didn't know what to do at university, and I had done what we used to call home ec or domestic science through high school, and they said go to the local college that does the culinary arts degree. So I did a three years culinary arts degree. Part of that was training in Switzerland. So I've always cooked from scratch with real food. You know, there haven't been packet mixes. And none of us, you know, after a certain age, we never grew up on packet mixes. So <laughs> only in recent yeah. years does everyone have all this processed food. So I've always done real food. I've always taught real food cooking classes, catered real food. And by real food, I mean ordinary natural ingredients. I'm not mm -hmm. talking the raw paleo diet or any of these okay. weird and wonderful diets. You called it the power of food. Mm -hmm. You are what you eat. And I say, you know, I'm not going to ask you to follow a raw food diet. How could we in New England our winters and give up your favorite foods? I still obviously like my chocolate and cheese, yeah. but I tell people now not just about gluten-free and other food allergies, but about trans fats and GMO and the FDA new nutrition and allergen labeling and sugars and fats and oils and flours and everything that people know me. They know I know food. They know I tell the truth. And I say, you can see from my hair and skin, I'm healthy. And I, we just love real ingredients. And it makes a huge difference to your health, as you know yourself. You yeah. don't need all that junk, all those chemicals that our bodies don't need or want and make us all sick. By talking to you, I know when we first met, I was so impressed by your knowledge. You know a lot, not only about food, but also about health. So tell us about what like, made the deciding factor for you to choose to go the gluten-free. Well, about five years ago, my son um, finished university, started work, and he started getting sick. And he wasn't here, he was in New York City, so that's rather difficult for a mother to figure out what's going on, and the son is not very cooperative. <laughs> and he ended Can't relate up, to that. <laughs> yeah, we all know that one. And a friend said to him, well, you sound as if you've got the same as me, and I've just been tested with something called an endoscopy, and I have celiac disease. Mm. So that's when they said, yes, your son diagnosed. And so, you know, the mother's guilt trip, you mm. end up cooking for your baby. Even though my baby's six foot four, he's still my baby. <laughs> and so um, ordinary food is naturally gluten-free until the mm. companies start messing around with it. It's only baking you actually have to change. Mm. So um, most, I, I'll say, soups, salads, vegetables, entrees are basically naturally gluten-free if you cook from scratch. And it was the baking I changed. And of course, for my baby, as I say. And I still continued eating wheat flour, bread, and cereal, because most of it on sale is disgusting. And it's ridiculously high priced, because they know that celiac disease, or what is also known as non-celiac gluten sensitivity, yes. for those that don't have the genetic marker for celiac disease, mm -hmm. you have no choice. It's a medical condition. You get better when you avoid gluten, which is basically wheat, barley, and rye. Mm -hmm. And you get worse with so many different, up to 300 different disorders, mm -hmm. if you eat the gluten. And then I was um, giving one of my talks on food, and I was talking to some nurses because my, um, my reaction to gluten has never been stomach, and yet doctors are told stomach is your reaction. Mm -hmm. And in fact, stomach is one of the least reactions. As I say, there's 300 disorders that can be triggered by gluten. Mm -hmm. Mine was arthritis and period pains. Yeah. And infertility and miscarriages are very, very common yes. with the gluten problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to a nurse and she said to me she was only diagnosed with celiac disease when her two little ones had anaphylactic reactions mm -hmm. when she went totally gluten free. And this is a nurse that should have been somewhat more aware of this. Yeah. Her neurological problems went and all her period problems went within two cycles. Mm -hmm. I went 100% gluten free. My arthritis went away, which I'd had for years after a ski accident, mm -hmm. and all my period problems went away. Mm -hmm. And that was enough for me to say, yeah, 
that was definitely gluten because unfortunately the regular blood test for gluten is nowhere near 100% accurate. Doctors will say to you, oh, you, you need to have us prove it to you, whereas there's another doctor out there and many others will say, go with your gut, literally. If you feel better going gluten-free, then obviously your body doesn't like whatever is causing the inflammation. And it is an inflammation. Gluten yes. is an inflammation. It's tied in with asthma, diabetes, migraines, brain fog, tiredness, all the things we have as stress in today's world. But if you start clearing gluten out of your diet, it can make a huge difference to your body. In less than a week, you can start noticing differences. So what you are talking now is what I normally talk to my clients. Yes. <laughs> We're on the same page. Yes. That's what I've seen with a lot of my clients yes. who have issues from depression, ADHD to digestive problems to infertility. Yes. Yeah, it's, they are all, you know, can be traced back to gluten sensitivity. I feel very yes. strongly that HDHD and autism, mm -hmm. yes. I do say, I feel that there's a, an underlying vulnerability perhaps mm -hmm. that the gluten has now triggered. Unfortunately, wheat nowadays is what they call modern wheat that yes. our bodies weren't yeah. used to. Mm -hmm. And if you start looking at ingredients, wheat is in absolutely everything. It's not just in, in your bread and pasta. It's put in jams nowadays, it's in toothpaste, it's in your eye makeup. Doctors also tell you you can only get the gluten through your mouth. Well, I've, I found I was using, um, I was yeah. using hand cream that had wheat germ in it and my hands were hurting. I went yeah. to a brand that had no wheat germ in it and surprise, surprise, my hands also <laughs> stopped hurting. I mean, what is wheat doing in toothpaste? What's it doing in jam that should be basically fruit and sugar? So we're being overdosed with this wheat. And I keep saying wheat, but it is also barley and rye. But barley is the sweetener that's put in everything under the sun. And unfortunately, the FDA, and in their wonderful wisdom, only uses the word wheat on that allergen labeling. The rest of the world uses the word gluten. Yeah. The FDA only says wheat. They don't include barley and rye still. So yeah. people don't realize. And companies are very, very, very bad about telling you the truth. They don't want to. And they don't know half the time. That's true. Wheat, barley, and rye, they have most of the glutens. But some of the other grains also have gluten. Yes, but Not they're different. Much, they're yes. a different gluten. Yeah. Um, rice has a form of gluten. Oats uh -huh. has a form of gluten. They used to say that oats were a bad one for gluten. Now they're saying, no, um, as long as you buy certified gluten-free oats, you're mm -hmm. safe. Because okay. oats are easily contaminated in the growing and processing. Uh -huh. Same as corn. It's easily contaminated in the growing and um, processing. Um, so, um, but they also say if you're diagnosed with celiac disease, you should stay off even gluten-free oats for about six yeah. months till you heal. But yes, I mean ADHD and autism, but then you look also, and, and we're saying not just gluten-free, but the junk out there, the amount of sugar in oh, children's yes. diets nowadays. Out of 600,000 products on the grocery store shelves, 80% have added sugar. Children's cereals have 40% more sugar than adult cereals. And the healthy mm -hmm. cereals are always on the top or bottom shelves out of your eyeline sight because yeah. they want you to buy the high sugar junk stuff, which yes. is no good to anyone. It doesn't sustain you at all. You know, That's so I true. rant and rave about things like this because people don't know real food any longer and they're not told the truth out there. Yeah, that's the sad truth. And actually, when I was growing up in China, we used to just grow our own vegetables yes. and fruits and everything was organic. Yes. And so we never had so many healthy issues. No. Nowadays, we've seen all these problems. So it, it's not only gluten, but also it's healthy eating, healthy cooking. So tell us a little bit more about for people who want to try gluten-free diet, who want to try even the cooking, where do they start? Because it's so overwhelming. Yes. Well, there was a very interesting piece on the Jimmy Kimmel show last month that I posted on my Facebook, Gluten Free Cooking with Una, this week. I thought, I've got to look this up. And some of this was because of pure, um, meant to be humorous. They went out in LA, I think it was, and asked people, were you on a gluten-free diet and did you know what gluten was? Well, of course, they chose the four that, yes, we're on a gluten-free diet, but had no idea what gluten was. But unfortunately, that is what the media has made it into be. They'll tell you if you follow a gluten-free diet, you'll lose weight. Well, you'll only lose weight if you're looking at it the same as the South Beach diet. You're cutting all carbs of any sort out of your diet and just doing meat and vegetable. Of course, you'll lose weight. Mm -hmm. If you go to gluten-free, you're not necessarily 
necessarily going to lose weight. Some do and some don't, depending what their body structure is. Yes. But if you're still taking in starches, you're still taking in starches. And unfortunately, far too many gluten-free products, the baked products on the shelves, yeah. might be gluten-free, but they've added more salt, sugar, and fat <laughs> because you need to add That's in back true. flavor. Uh -huh. So they're even less healthy for you. Mm. Now, um, what I say to people when they want to start, I'll say, well, you know, what's your normal daily diet like? So if you like a cereal, here's cereals I use that I like. Um, I make the quinoa that we're going to be doing in a demo shortly. I'll do that for breakfast, and it's fabulous because we women don't take in enough protein. So I'll do freshly cooked quinoa with yogurt and fruit and nuts for breakfast, and it keeps you going forever, far better than oatmeal does. But also there's good brands of a muesli substitute out there that's gluten-free. Trader Joe's has one. Bob's Red Mill that's throughout the market has all the different cereals. If you like a bagel, Udi's do a basic gluten-free bagel that Trader Joe's and the local stores carry. It's not a bagel, but it, it does what you want it to do. If you like a wrap at lunchtime, I tell them Rudy's does a good gluten-free wrap that's in the freezer section. You know, Barilla does a good gluten-free pasta. My YouTube channel, Gluten-Free Cooking with Una, I have a complete piece on the different gluten-free pastas out there. So in terms of ordinary food, it's very easy. You have to look. You can't thicken with flour, so you do different ways of thickening. You have to check the stock you use is gluten-free. But some of the brands you recognize in the store are very definitely gluten-free. You know? Uh, so I understand this. Even some of the gluten-free stuff, it's not completely gluten-free. They might have some hidden gluten well, in there. Well, you're meant right? to have less than 20 parts per million, which is like a penny in $10,000, mm. that little, because the amount of gluten, and we'll call it wheat breadcrumbs, that's the yeah. easiest thing for people yeah. to think of, is the little white moon on your mm. little finger. That amount of breadcrumbs on your plate is what can give someone, and I'll say it in non-gluten-free talk, mm. Imagine the worst dose of food poisoning you've ever had lasting for several days. That's how badly any of us can be hit if someone puts a wheat flour gluten, um, sorry, a wheat flour crouton mm -hmm. on our salad and just takes it off and gives us the same salad. Mm -hmm. Just touching it like that can give people the worst dose of food poisoning. I get arthritis like flu joint aches throughout my body and they can last for days on end. As I say, yeah, period yeah. pains, that can be, I used to be 30 days of the month period pains, and mm -hmm. most of us women take it for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, you think your brain fog and migraines is gluten. Mm -hmm. it, it is ordinary everyday stress. Now it could be gluten. Yeah. But that's the thing. Um, you can't be sure that what you're buying is gluten-free. Too mm -hmm. many products they've tested and they're not gluten-free. Yes. You try and phone the big manufacturers. Too many of them don't know what they're talking about. I always say if you see a product that clearly says gluten-free on it, yeah. and I'll tell the names I trust in my cookbook, mm -hmm. I, I give business to them and I use the products and I'll tell people about them because people trust me to know food. Yes. You know? So tell us about your book. You published the cookbook. Well, my book, it's this one, Delicious Gluten-Free uh -huh. Cooking, and I say it's from um, Kid Friendly of Toll House Cookies, Pancakes and Waffles, uh -huh. to Adult Indulgent of Chicken and Buffalo Soup, um, Corned Beef in Gluten-Free Beer, an English trifle and a tiramisu, all gluten-free. But apart mm -hmm. from the baking, most of the food in there is naturally gluten-free for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's just tasty, real, delicious foods. So as you know, I'm doing cooking classes starting beginning of June in Nashua at a holistic center. And it's natural, real food with fresh salads and fresh vegetables. As you're saying, you grew up organic. Mm -hmm. I've been harvesting my own fresh lettuce that I grow hydroponically for over three weeks now. Uh -huh. I go out and cook all my fresh herbs that we'll have in the salad today. It makes an amazing difference to the taste. It's no more difficult than picking up some processed food. Mm -hmm. And at least you're not looking to see, oh, what's the sodium level? And mm -hmm. how many fake oils are in this? Or quite honestly, am I overdosing on soy everywhere? Because soy and corn are, um, most of them are GMO, and people are very upset about yeah, GMOs yeah. in the food. And we still don't know the truth behind it. You know, I'm very cynical about the government and the <laughs> FDA. And if GMO is basically required to be labeled in 64 countries throughout yes. the world and America's still not doing it, I don't believe these people. And we both grew up on real yeah. food, and it makes a difference. Well, yeah, I absolutely. mean, we both look 21 still, <laughs> you know? But it well, is. You yeah, can absolutely. see you it look shows gorgeous. in your face yes. and skin if mm -hmm. you follow a healthy diet. Yes. Did you know that without... Um, 
artificial sugars, a 64 ounce soda, which is very common in today's mm. world, has 46 teaspoons of sugar in oh, it. Yeah. And if you go to the artificial sugars, they're liquid poison. And it sounds as if I'm ranting and raving and being crazy. Why are you putting this stuff in your body? Uh -huh. You know, you don't need this chemicals and preservatives, and you don't know what they're doing to your body. Oh, I always say, true. you know, that's remember true. thalidomide. We were told how safe the drugs were for thalidomide. I don't know if you know the name of it from China. It was a drug given to stop babies yes. waking the mother up in the womb. And look at what happened with that because we were told it was healthy. Oh, we don't know about scary. all this stuff. If you go real yes. food, you're a lot, lot safer. I you absolutely know. agree. I am looking forward to the food demonstration. Yes. It just looks wonderful there. So you want to show us? Yes, we will do that. Um, okay. We are doing, as you know, a quinoa tabbouleh salad. Okay. Because tabbouleh is not gluten-free, and this is, and it's, oh. it's wonderful. So okay. we will go over there. All right. Sounds great. So let's do that. So quinoa, when you buy quinoa in the store, it looks like these tiny grains here and it cooks up to look like this. Now, um, it's known as the mother of all grains or a super grain because it's a, um, a total protein and it contains all the essential amino acids for your body. So for people on a vegetarian or vegan diet, it's really good for the mm. amount of protein that's in it. As I say, I'll cook it up and have it for breakfast with yogurt and fruit and nuts and it keeps me going easily four hours because it's so good for you. So um, if you see the packet saying it's pre-rinsed, you still need to put it in a tiny, tiny colander because you can see how tiny these seeds are mm -hmm. and really rinse it well with cold water because it has this horrible chemical smell when you open the packet and that chemical smell is from a natural insecticide called saponin that the scientists tried to breed it out of the, the seeds so we wouldn't be tasting it and smelling it. But then the insects said, oh, dinner, and started devouring the crops, so they've now left it alone. It is grown in South America in the high Andes. And so what I do, having rinsed it, a rough rule of thumb, I'll take a cup of the raw quinoa, put it in a small milk saucepan with two cups of cold water, and if you're doing it for something savory, you can put chicken stock or whatever with it. Bring it to the boil, stir it, put the lid on, turn it down to a simmer, set the timer for 10 minutes. At the end of 10 minutes, turn the heat off, leave it sitting on the burner for another five minutes. At the end of the five minutes, take the lid off and do what you like with it. So that's done. So I've got it here, and you can see how dry and fluffy that is. And then what I have done is I make this lemon herb vinaigrette. As I say, apart from the fresh lemons that obviously we don't grow in New England, this has got fresh parsley in it, fresh green or green onions, and fresh mint, all from my garden. Ooh, and this is delicious. a dressing I will do for everything under the sun, because tabbouleh is normally done with bulgur wheat that's not gluten-free. And it, I think it's more of a hassle than using quinoa. And it's got some salt, some pepper, fresh lemon juice, fresh lemon zest, a little bit of honey to be more Middle Eastern, and that gives you the bit of sweetness rather than a sugar. Mm -hmm and a little bit of Dijon mustard, which you have to check it's a gluten-free one. Then I have put in the fresh parsley, fresh green onions, and fresh mint. This is a thing called an immersion blender that I just go in and out like that, and it chops it for you so you're not chopping. Mm -hmm. And if you do a salad dressing like this, it stays thick like a mayonnaise. It doesn't break up the way olive oil normally does. And I say in the recipe, don't put all of it in because we tend to forget that cucumber and tomatoes bring out plenty of juice. So I've mixed it and you can see how lovely and green it's looking. Mm -hmm. And then in here I have English cucumber that's peeled and they, they call it English cucumber over here because it's meant to be the burp plus one with less seeds. It's just what I grew up being used to. And then these are fresh sweet Campari tomatoes just chopped reasonably small. And you can use grape tomatoes but they take longer to chop. It's a pain. <laughs> and you can see the amount of juice they produce so that's why I say don't go putting in all the juice to start with and then you just mix it together. I, I am naturally a low salt person and I have fabulous blood pressure, but I do find for something like this, I like to add that little bit of salt. It just seems to give something extra to it. Mm -hmm. So we'll put it on this pretty container here. And you can see there's chive flowers there because I picked those from my things as well. And of course, it's going all over the place because the <laughs> spatula is not the best thing to do it with, but we'll ignore that. My husband loves it with feta cheese on top, which mm -hmm. you don't need for the protein, but you know, he loves it, so mm -hmm. go with it. And then we also love um, cashew nuts on top for the crunch. Mm -hmm. And that's really healthy. You can have that on its own as a meal.
That looks you, delicious. You don't even need chicken or anything with it. I do it in the winter time with zucchini and red peppers and some chicken sausage. I also do it um, as cold in the winter with craisins and cauliflower. I do it with fruit and poppy seeds as a side salad for a barbecue. So that's all totally natural quinoa. I mean, how quick was that to make? Yes, mm. I had to chop the tomatoes, but it's done. Then as a treat, this is the almond cake I do, which you can see the tart is the front cover of my cookbook, but it's basically naturally gluten-free. It's just almond flour, butter, sugar, eggs, and um, I made it Wilton do a giant whoopie pie pan, so that's the shape of the two of them. And I say, you know, in America when people talk a triple layer cake and it's this deep, mm -hmm. how many <laughs> calories are that? I mean, they will cut this same size wedge, but it's this deep, mm -hmm. and then they don't eat it, and that's a huge amount of calories. So this is naturally gluten-free because it's almond flour. Yes, it has an evil filling of some Nutella and cream, <laughs> but that was the easiest thing for me to do. You could just have it on its own with nothing. Um, this is the cake I did do for the Boston Celiac Conference back in April. It was my son's favorite thing, so it was one of the first things I had to change to totally gluten-free. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, it's, I had to make sure the extracts were gluten-free because extracts often have, are based on a wheat alcohol, so it's not safe. But those are totally delicious. And of course, if you were standing here, I'd be making sure that you tasted it. Oh, I'm going to taste it yeah, absolutely but afterwards. Go, mm. <laughs> but also, you know, when I do the television, I'm very conscious if you had this, you're going to get the herbs showing in your teeth and you don't want green teeth <laughs> showing. <laughs> but you know, these, the cake is just one of the baked recipes in my cookbook and it comes as a disc and you know, there's 70 recipes over 200 pages and it's for anyone with any food allergies. You know, I don't use soy oil and soy flour, which is another allergy. I do do dairy and lactose equivalents because my son is dairy intolerant as well. Yeah. I have a cousin who said to me last time she came, oh, the doctors thought I had 40 food allergies. They've tested me. I've only got 20. <laughs> now, you try cooking for a cousin that's both celiac disease, dairy intolerant, eggs, yeast, tomato, strawberries. I couldn't do strawberries mm. last summer because of strawberries for her. You have to make sure that the chocolate is gluten-free and dairy-free. You know, I mean, yeah. mushrooms, tomatoes, bananas, all the lovely things you would make into a good meal. But the salad niçoise, which is one of my, my recipes in my classes this week, with salmon and asparagus, she can eat all of it. I just don't give her the hard-boiled eggs on top, but it's all wonderful that, that way. So um, what else can we tell you? I, 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 I shall come back. Oh, and absolutely. Leave it there. Save that plate for me. I'm going to absolutely eat it. Yeah, I did, <laughs> tell, the, it. I did tell the crew that they'll be able to eat it afterwards because it's, <laughs> it's yes. so good. And, and the burst of, in your mouth, the burst from the fresh tomatoes that are sweet and ripe. And so many of us grow our own tomatoes in New Hampshire in the summer. Uh -huh. And it's so easy to grow your herbs. You go into Walmart or Home Depot, you can still get the little tubs of herb for about four bucks. You know, just um, some of them. I mean, my mint comes back every year, my oregano, my thyme, my mm. chives. They all come back each year. So you can plant them in the ground if you've got a bit of space. They like the heat of the summer. You just have to watch to water them till they get established mm -hmm. but you start making your oil or your own oil and vinegar vinaigrette touch of salt and pepper as I say I used honey I do one with a little bit of maple syrup you could use ordinary sugar if you have to use stevia please don't use Splenda Splenda is the real oh, artificial yeah. sugar stevia at least is a natural sugar but it's intensely sweet yes. and mm -hmm. Depending what you're doing it with, it has a slightly strange flavor, so you can only do it with strong tasting things. But make your own herb dressing. Okay. It's such fun, and the flavors are different. If I'd made that with lemon thyme, the flavor would be so different, because lemon thyme is phenomenal. Yes. Mix lemon uh -huh. thyme and dill, not into sour cream, which even light sour cream, the fat mm -hmm. is high content. Get Greek yogurt. I, I like Cabot Greek yogurt. I tend to think of Cabot in Vermont as being a neighbor, <laughs> and I've met them at loads of trade shows, so I know their stuff is good. So I do Greek yogurt as a dressing. Mm -hmm. You put the little bit of olive oil in, which adds to the mouthfeel, the salt and pepper, put the fresh dill, the fresh parsley in, and you've got a fabulous dressing for going on um, fresh salmon or fresh mm -hmm. chicken. Mix it in your potato salad. You don't need to do the high fat mayonnaise. It's not got eggs in it for those that are egg intolerant. So you just think of all these ways. I also use the sweetened Greek yogurt in various things. Oh, yeah. And I make um, what's called labne, which is the yogurt cheese. And I posted that because I've written for the National Foundation for Celiac Awareness for over three years with a column. 
and one of my recipes was the yogurt cheese and literally just um, straining Greek yogurt through coffee filters and a weight and then as I say mixing the olive oil, the herbs and making little balls of it and it's fabulous. Put that on your bagel in the morning instead of high fat cream cheese. So thank you for having me. I hope, hope people will enjoy the recipes. I can give you the recipes to post. So they oh, don't I need totally to worry. understand yes. that. I've got to ask you one more question though. This morning before I came over to do the TV show, I talked with my son who also is trying to get on gluten-free diet. I know that even though he's very healthy, but eating gluten-free should be good for him. But his complaint is that if I go gluten-free, then it wouldn't taste as good. So I said, what question do you want me to ask my friend, um, Chef Wuna? He said, ask her, is it possible for you to learn how to do gluten-free <laughs> cooking? <laughs> how long would it take? Well, I mean, as I say, my classes start in Nashua next week, which are um, basically the entrees and salads and very little baking. and. Uh, Nobody has said anything but that my food is delicious. That's why my gluten-free cookbook is called Delicious. Uh -huh. When I go to neighborhood parties and bring desserts, and they know I'm gluten-free now, all they say is that an Una dessert. Uh, and <laughs> it Una vanishes. Desserts. I tried Una desserts yes, a few weeks ago. That, yes, that was yeah. wonderful. Yeah. What's the name of that cake? That was a tipsy cake, which is basically the gold cake that you bake. And when it was baked, it had orange zest in the raw batter. And then when it's baked, and this is evil. These are treats, remember. This is not every day. It was an orange juice and sugar syrup with um, a good orange liqueur in it, saturated the cake. And then when you let it go cold, you smother it in whipped cream with more orange liqueur. And then, sh yeah, I mean, it's evil. But it's evil but it's good. But it's delicious. It's and, very good. You know, I, in wheat flour days, I said, why are you buying packet mix cakes? You've still got to add eggs and oil to it. And it's full of chemicals. What is that doing to your body? And why are you paying that price? Throw, you know, eggs, butter, sugar in a bowl, and it's done in two minutes. That's all that almond cake was. It was the almond flour, butter, sugar, eggs, beaten a couple of minutes, put in the Wilton um, giant whoopie pie pan, which is those two. So you saw that was two levels. Yeah. That's all you need in the house as a treat. You do not need a three-layer cake. You know, so I mean, wow. you're slim, I'm not, but I'm healthy with it. That's what the important a, what thing. What a treat. Well, you know. thank you so much. You're I very really welcome. appreciate it, everything. And yes, I will have and to teach you so your son doesn't keep absolutely. complaining. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm going to get one of your cookbooks. Yes. So. <laughs> thank you for having me. Well, so we all have had such a great time with Chef Wuna. As you can see, food can be your best medicine or your worst poison. So choose wisely. Stay healthy. See you next time.